How's it going everyone? So for this video, we're going to go over the problem path with maximum gold. This is a problem asked at Google currently. So the description says in a gold mine grid of size M by N, each cell in this mine has an integer representing the amount of gold in that cell, zero if it is empty. Return the maximum amount of gold you can collect under the conditions. Every time you are located in a cell, you will collect all the gold in that cell. From your position, you can walk one step to the left, right, up, or down. You can't visit the same cell more than once. Never visit a cell with zero gold. And finally, you can start and stop collecting gold from any position in the grid that has some gold. So this problem can essentially be boiled down to finding the maximum path sum in our grid. But keep in mind, because of this constraint, it says never visit a cell with zero gold. We can look at cells that have zeros in them as walls or boundaries. We're never going to visit those cells. So our maximum path sum will not include a path where it contains a zero. And another important condition is this one right here. It says you can start and stop collecting gold from any position. So what this tells us is that any cell in our grid that is greater than zero, we have to find the maximum path sum starting at that position. And so the way we're going to solve this is using a depth first search. You could also use a breadth first search, but I find the DFS solution is much easier to understand and write. So let's jump over to the whiteboard and I'll go over some examples. So we have the integer array 060587090. The maximum path sum in this grid would be 987. But that doesn't mean we don't check any other paths. We still have to check, you know, 687, 587, 986, 985. So there's a, a bunch of paths we still have to check. And this is where we're going to do a DFS for every number that's greater than zero, we're going to start a DFS from that position. And we're going to keep track of a maximum. So typically in a BFS, we have to keep track of nodes that we've already visited. Let's say we were at this number six, right? We would check down, right? And we'd see, oh, we have another number that's greater than zero. Let's visit that cell as well. So then we visit eight. But we have to make sure that in this recursive call on number eight, that we don't go back and check node six because we're we already came from node six. So we would get in an infinite loop if we don't keep track of visited cells. So the way we're going to keep track of visited cells is we're going to use a 2D Boolean array. So the Boolean array will be the same size as our grid. And initially, they will all be initialized to false because this indicates that we have not visited these cells yet. And then we need to keep track of our maximum sum. So we're going to need a variable and we can just call it max. And by default, this can just be zero. And this max variable is what we will eventually return from our function. So we need to iterate over our grid. So we would start looking at this zero and we don't care about zeros. We're not supposed to visit them. So whenever we see a zero, we should just skip it. And then we're going to be looking at this number six. Since that's greater than zero, we need to perform a DFS starting from this position. And so we're going to look in every direction of, of this position. And after we compute the maximum sum in every position, we're going to get the maximum in all of those directions and then return it from our recursive function. And so by the end of this DFS, we should have the maximum path sum that's starting from this position. So if we look left, that is a zero. We don't care about zero. So our maximum path sum to the left of us is just zero. Above us is out of bounds. So that's also zero to the right of us. We have zero as well. However, when we check down, we have another node. But keep in mind, we have to keep track of our visited. So now that we've visited this node six, we need to update the corresponding Boolean array. So this false would be changed to true, saying that we have visited this node. 
or this cell. And so we're going to do the same thing for node 8. We're going to check left. And we can see that this is also uh, a, a greater than 0. So we're going to do the same thing. Then we're going to check left here. That's out of bounds, so we get 0. We check above us. That's 0, so we just have 0. We check to the right of us. But keep in mind, this 8, we are visiting this, this position. So what that tells us is we need to change this Boolean value to true. We are visiting this value. And since this node 5 is looking at a, an already visited cell, that means we just return 0 from this call. And then finally, we're going to look down. And this is also a 0, so we return 0 from this function. And so now that we've computed all of these numbers in every direction for this cell 5, we can see that we have 1, 0, 2, zeros, 3, zeros, 4, zeros. We need to perform the maximum of the numbers in every direction. So the maximum of four zeros is just 0. And then we add our current cell value, which is 5. And that's what we return from our function. So we would return 5 to this cell 8. And now that we are done visiting this cell 5, we need to go back to our Boolean array and change it back to false. We are no longer visiting cell 5. And then we're going to continue on with the DFS for cell 8. So we're going to look right. We're going to visit this cell 7. We're going to change the corresponding position to true. We're going to look left. We can see that cell 8 is already visited, so we return 0. We look up, return 0. Right is out of bounds, return 0, and then look down. And once again, we have a 0. So we do the same thing as we did for cell 5. The maximum between four zeros is 0, plus our current cell value. That would be 7 that we return back to cell 8. And then we are no longer visiting cell 7. So we go back and update our Boolean array to be false. We're no longer visiting it. And then finally, we're going to look down for cell 8. And we're going to visit that position. So this corresponding Boolean value will change to true. And we're going to look left. We have a 0. We look above us. We're already visiting that cell, so we return 0. We look to the right, 0. Look down, 0. We do the maximum between four zeros is 0 plus 9, our current cell value. So we return 9 back to cell 8. And so this is where we're currently at now that it's uh, cleaned up a little bit. We're returning 5, 7, and 9 to this cell 8, and now we need to compute the maximum in every direction for this cell 8. So we had also above, we had a 0. So the maximum between 0, 5, 9, and 7 is equal to 9. And then we add our current cell value, so plus 8. And that would be 17, right? So what we return to this cell 6 would be 17. And then once again, we're going to compute the maximum for this cell 6. And we can see that we have a 0 to the left of us, 0 above, 0 right, and then 17 down. So we compute the maximum between 17, 0, 0, 0, which would be 17. And then we add 6 to it. So now we are finished with DFS starting at this node. So our current maximum should change to 23 because we did 17 plus 6. So we've performed DFS starting at this node, and we got 23. And so we're going to do the same thing for every other position. It will be the same idea. We're going to continue iterating over our array. We get to this cell 5, we're going to perform DFS. 
Go to cell 8, perform DFS. Go to cell 7, perform DFS. Ignore 0. Go to cell 9, perform DFS. Go to another 0, ignore it. And by the end of iteration, we will have a max that we have found. So, you know, f starting from this node, we may have, you know, 5. Starting from this node, 25. Starting at this node, 30, right? And this max variable will just keep track of those sums that we calculate for every DFS. So hopefully that makes sense for you guys. I'm going to jump into the code and I'll show you guys how to implement it. All right, so let's first handle the case where our grid is null or empty. Then we just want to return zero. We won't have any gold. And then we're going to have a max variable, and this can just be initialized to zero. And then let's also extract our lengths from our grid. So M will be our row length, and N will be our column length. And then we need to iterate over every element in our grid. And once we are looking at each cell, we only want to perform DFS on values that are greater than zero. We should ignore values that are just zero. So we can say if grid ij is greater than zero, then we will compute whatever gold that we find. So we can say int gold, and we can say maybe uh, find gold, or find max gold. And what we're going to pass into this function, we need to pass in our grid. We're going to pass in our current position, our lengths uh, of our grid, our row and column length. And then another thing we need is a visited Boolean array like we did in the example. So we can create a new 2D Boolean array, and it's going to be the same size as our grid, so M and N. And once we come out of this recursive DFS function, we're going to compute the maximum. So we could say math.max of max and gold. And then by the end of these two nested for loops, we will just return max. So now all we need to do is implement this find max gold function. So let's do that. We're going to return an integer. And we're going to pass in our grid our position, our row length, column length, and then our visited array. And so there's a couple different base cases we have to handle. So the first thing is out of bounds. If we encounter out of bounds, we should just return zero from our function. Additionally, if visited at position ij, so our current position is equal to true, then we should return zero because we don't want to look at a cell that we've already visited, right? Additionally, we want to make sure that our current position is not zero because we're not supposed to visit cells that have no gold. So if our grid ij is zero, then we're just going to return. So let's write all these uh, these out. So we're going to say if i is less than 0 or j is less than 0 or i is greater than or equal to our row length or j is greater than or equal to our column length or grid at position ij is equal to 0 or visited at position ij is true. If any of those statements are true, then we should just return zero from our function immediately. If that's not true, then we know we, are, uh, we have a cell that is greater than zero if we make it to this line. So the first thing we want to do is set our visited position to be true. We are currently looking at this cell. And then we're going to compute find max gold in all of the different directions. So we can say int left, find max gold of grid i j minus 1 m n visited. 
and we can just copy this and we're going to check right up and down so we're going to check in every position from our current cell and so we just need to modify our positions so up will be i minus one down will be i plus one and so after we have computed all of these dif different directions we are done looking at our current cell so that means we need to set visited of our current position back to false we are no longer looking at it because we've already checked in every direction from our current cell and then here is where we get the maximum from every direction. So we can say math.max from left, math.max from right, math.max up, down. So this is just getting the very maximum number from all four of those numbers. And whatever that computation comes out to, we're just going to add grid i j our current value in that cell and we're just going to return that computation and so that's it for this recursive function so let's just make sure that this code works cool so i'll go over the time and space complexity now the time complexity is m times n because we have to iterate over every single element in our input grid and then our space complexity is also big O of m times n. Our extra space comes from our visited array that we have to create on line 14. And it also comes just from our recursion depth. So in the worst case, you can imagine if we had a grid that contained only numbers that were greater than zero, we would have to do a DFS for every single position over and over again. So that's why our space is m times n. So hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. Let me know if there's any other types of problems you want me to solve. Till next time, peace.